Hi, this is David Floyer. I'm at the OCEP conference today. And with me, I've got Kevin Deerling, who is Vice President of Marketing at Mellanox. Kevin, welcome. Good to see you, David. Always good to be here. Oh, it's good to have you here. So uh, your mission at Mellanox, if I can put it uh, succinctly, is to connect everybody with everything. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. We, All right. we like to connect the clouds and the data centers and uh, really everybody. Oh, so uh, at the conference, did you consummate any uh, new uh, connections? We really did. So we made a couple of announcements here at the show, and it's interesting, we covered three different CPU architectures. So we're really connecting across multiple platforms, uh, the Olympus platform that Microsoft announced, they also That's announced. That's the x86 one, is it? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And we also announced a platform with Qualcomm that uh, we're connecting a Qualcomm ARM-based platform that Microsoft also says they're going to be using as part of Olympus in their Azure cloud. Wow, okay. And then the, the third one was a power architecture. So that was a Power 9 architecture. Um, what's interesting about this, there's a lot of firsts there. The Qualcomm is the first CPU that's at 10 nanometers. So they're taking the process lead, uh, really driving what they've done in the mobile platform. And it's coming into the uh, into the uh, server platform. Exactly, yes. it's kind of backwards. It used to be that the servers and, you know, they would drive, the CPUs would drive the process roadmaps. Now we're seeing mobile platforms doing it, so Qualcomm's leading in the process. Well, if you think about it, it's exactly the same playbook as Intel who introduced it uh, first of all on the PCs and then got into the server market. And exactly. it seems that uh, Qualcomm are doing the same thing in the, uh, in the ARM market. That's right, you find the volume yeah. market, use that to drive your process, so Qualcomm's there now with, with 10, 10 nanometers. nanometers. The other big thing that we announced, the first ever, was a PCI Express Gen 4 server. So the Power 9 is the first CPU that has this PCI Express Gen 4, which is the faster speed of PCI Express I.O. connectivity. So the fastest I.O. connectivity, again, is on power CPU right. architecture. So pretty exciting that they're leading there. So Intel are being pressured a little bit at the top by the open power and pressured at the bottom from, from ARM with, with different objectives, uh, different uh, connectivity uh, issues. Absolutely, and so Facebook talked about the power platform that they're using. That platform is called Zaya. It was actually uh, a co-development between Rackspace and Google as part of this OCP project. And so it's an open platform. Similarly, the project Olympus, which is the Microsoft, there they've got both the x86 and the Qualcomm ARM processors. So we're excited to connect all of it. Oh, wow. That's you right in the middle of everything. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, why are they using you to connect? I mean, it seems a simple question, but you know, why are you so popular? Yeah, so we actually have greater than 90% market share of the 25 gig and above sort of NICs, Ethernet NICs. So 25, 40, 50, and 100 gigabits per second. So we have the fastest NICs out there, so hence all of these different cloud and you know, hyperscale data centers are using our NICs inside of their data centers. Also, we have a technology that's called Rocky, which is RDMA over converged Ethernet. It's a technology that Microsoft was showing in their data centers and in their storage. They can actually deliver extremely good efficiency. And the whole key there is that we're able to deliver this 100 gigabits per second of bandwidth without chewing up all of the CPUs. That's still the most expensive part of the server, is the CPU and the right. memory subsystem. Yes. Yeah. And we give it back to run applications and we move the data for you. So you, you've moved that uh, uh, overhead of Rocky, put it into your own NICs and your own uh, chips. Exactly right. So we take make the data transport very, very efficient and it doesn't use any of the CPU. That means you can run more workloads. So whether you're Facebook or Microsoft or doing a public cloud or a Web2 dot application, you can run that application, support more users, and not have to worry about moving the data around. Right, and if you've got a, an expensive uh, piece of software which is core counted, then you can use it for running the application as opposed to running the network behind it. Exactly, so if you're paying a license fee, you know you don't want to pay that and then chew up half of your CPUs just moving the data back and forth. You want to have all of it focused on running the application. So all of these connections that you talked about, 
we're talking about pretty short connections here, aren't we? I mean, sort of meters rather than anything else? Yeah, so you know, most of the switch to server connections are under three meters. So we actually have a full line of connectivity products. We do copper cables inside of the racks that go to our top of right. rack switches, right. our spectrum switch. We can do 100 gig, we have breakout cables that go to 25 gig, and that's all copper for those short distances. And then it depends on how far you need to run and how big your data center is. Well, just come back to that in a second, but talk a little bit more about the, the switches there. Well, you were talking about uh, connecting 425 uh, gigabit uh, into one 100, 100 gig. gigabit. Exactly right. We have a breakout cable. So our top of rack switches, one of the other announcements we made here at OCP this week is that we're running Sonic, which is the Microsoft open source uh, operating system that runs on top of the switch. It has really good metrology and observability so you can monitor what's happening in right. these giant data centers. That's running on top of our sonic uh, spectrum-based switch. And so we can take a 100 gig port and we can break it out to four 25 gig lengths and connect to four servers. So with one half rack width server we can, or switch, we can connect to 64 25 gig servers. That's really cool. impressive. That's cool. Yeah. Well, what about the longer distances then? I mean, uh, data centers are pretty big these days. The yeah. Azure data center, I, I think, is more measured in kilometers, isn't it, than uh, meters? Yeah. So once you get beyond about three meters, people will go to often multi-mode fiber, which uses Vixel technologies. We have transceivers and cables that do that. And then when you get to these hyperscale data centers, 100 meters doesn't cut it. It's not big enough to connect from one end of the data center to the other. So we have a silicon photonics platform. We bought two companies uh, and we have a silicon photonics platform that goes up to two kilometers over single mode fiber, really cool technology. We're shipping this stuff in volume now. Wow, okay, so you've got photonics, you've got the, uh, the normal one, and you've got uh, a, a, a set of different uh, protocols that you can use to connect things together. What other protocols are you uh, supporting? Yeah, so I think one of the big areas that we've seen development is on the storage side. So we see things like NVMe, and now NVMe over fabrics. That's a new class of flash connections, and a bunch of the guys were showing platforms today that use these new NVMe drives. The good news from our perspective is faster storage needs faster networks. We can take three NVMe drives and saturate a 100 gig link, but to do that, we need things like NVMe over fabrics. Right. That lets you extend the storage. You don't care whether it's in your box or somewhere on the other end of the data center. You just go grab the data. We do that with super low latency and we offload all of that. So storage is a big push for Mellanox. So that seems to me the, the data center of the future, isn't it? You're going to have these uh, very high performance disks down in the, uh, the, the really low uh, levels of uh, latency, you know, 50 microseconds, even lower. Yes. Uh, and then those are going to be having to connect to multiple CPUs and multiple nodes. Uh, okay. That's obviously a prerequisite. So this connectivity, this uh, MV, MV, NVMe over fabric, yep is going to be the key to doing that. When do you see that coming out? When do you see yeah. that uh, hitting the market? So we see it in the market now. So our first generation with our Connect X4, we accelerated parts of that. That's a 100 gig device. Now with the Connect X5, we've offloaded all of it. And NVMe over Fabrics is really the next generation of storage networking because there is no fiber channel in the cloud. No. You never see That's it. Right. Okay, yeah. they don't deploy it. They're using a converged infrastructure, in this case Ethernet. So the ability to do that and we're also doing accelerations for virtualization and VMs and DPDK, all the data OVS services. offloads, yeah. all the things that when you're in a cloud environment and you have lots of multi-tenants in the same physical infrastructure, we create virtual networks and virtual pools of resources and lo let you go get your storage and your data wherever it is and you don't have to worry that you're operating in a multi-tenant environment where you might be using the same physical wires and servers as one of your competitors, but we keep it everything isolated. So for the first time, we're going back to direct connect uh, storage, but it's actually connected to everything in the fabric. That's right. Automatically. That's so right. Back it's, to the future. It's your server SAN that you talk yeah. about. It's That's exactly that's right. Exactly You're putting right. it yeah. direct attached storage, but now it's shared storage. And to do that, you need these really low latency, efficient protocols. Otherwise, you end up burning up all your CPU cycles moving the just data, moving, which just right. doesn't make sense. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, Kevin.